Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company. Uh, without further ado, this is the third preview part of my research on who owns the media in part one. Uh, and I'm looking at certain areas where the media all acts together to suppress or distort information that's quite obvious to any outsider. In the case of Ron Paul Kennedy, they all came out with the exact same talk, being, talking point, all the media channels, which was there are now three top tier candidates. There's now top tier in this election, and they mentioned one, two, and four, um, ignoring uh, Ron Paul. They called him wacky, which is a disservice to the 50% of people under 30 who support him in many polls. They've called him uh, invisible and laughed. Uh, so he's been denied oxygen. There's been an order out to mock him, not take him seriously, and deny him oxygen. Okay, so uh, this is clear. It's a distortion. It's a total travesty. Our journalists should be ashamed of themselves. There are no journalists left. It, uh, there are a few that are, of course, counteracting this. Uh, two on Fox, actually. Uh, Neil Cavuto and Judge Napolitano, actually. So at any rate, <clears throat> we were looking at who owns the media. And the f first of all, these are the companies that own the broadcast media, ABC, CBS, Comedy Central, NBC, MSNBC, uh, CNN, and Fox, and in this case, the Wall Street Journal. These are all the main video outlets. They control a lot of intellectual property. It's hard to see stuff that they don't have their fingers in. Okay, and so we looked at uh, and analyzed who owned these companies, and we found the same investment groups over and over as I think I can show you. For example, if we go over to, for example, these are the investment firms we found, and these, and we coded them against each of the outlets. And then what we did is we looked at um, their final positions, and I believe these were their final positions. Um, yes, and then we have this uh, graphic here as well, uh, showing. Uh, Vanguard, State Street, BlackRock, uh, Fidelity, and T. Rowe Price. Um, these are the companies, um, uh, let's see, uh, who have invested in media companies, right? Um, and so at any rate, then we go on and look at the top ten banks have significant positions from the same group of six. <clears throat> and in terms of government contractors, this is extremely interesting. Oh, there we go. Let's go back. Sorry. Now, these are all the government contractors. And um, these government contractors, let's see if I can. Uh, and here's the uh, just uh, the hard list um, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, Raytheon, Science Application, General Dynamics, KBR, and so forth. These are the companies that uh, uh, sell their services to the government. And um, so ultimately, uh, what we found was that uh, the companies that owned uh, equity in the military uh, industrial uh, companies, Raytheon, uh, Northrop Grumman, uh, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, were the same as owned ABC, CBS, CNN, uh, Etc. <clears throat> so then, to try to deconstruct it further, we looked at who owned one of these uh, six investment companies, and the other five own it. So it becomes an impossible polyglot. And the main thing to emphasize is at the very top, you have the guys who play the marionettes. So it's rather confusing. So this shows that. You're the guy next to you, you're competing with owns part of you. And one of the companies that you own owns part of you. So you'll find that the companies that they own have stock in these companies. So it loops around and loops around. Uh, so you ultimately want to look at uh, a document that I created uh, to try to make sense of all this. And here it is. So what you've got. <clears throat> Uh, in this case, as, you, as you've got the public sector officials who are seeking connections while in office and in the federal government, which is pretty much everybody. Then there are lobbyists. Lobbyists can provide these favors and ask for favors uh, on behalf of corporations in this case. And we have ideological pressures on the system of decision making. And in this case, I described APAC because there is a lot of very powerful Jewish people in the media 
They're not the sole uh, factor, but some of the legacy people started in the entertainment business, grew their businesses wildly to become media blockbuster houses, do support Israel, and probably do support more of a forward deployment in the Middle East of the U.S. than other people, and that particularly concerns uh, me. Uh, so I have to disclose my own concern, which is that I don't want us to uh, be defeated militarily later by overspending on wasteful military now. Um, so at any rate, uh, these are the corporations and the sectors. So you've got banking and finance, uh, which benefits greatly because the public sector simply prints money and they are able to make tons of money off of it every time the currency fluctuates, basically, or conditions fluctuate. Then you've got defense sector contractors. They want to see uh, a strong, corrupt bond between the public sector and themselves. Um, so they're quite willing to spend money to have equities and media companies to influence those transactions and to keep the population pro-war. It's a minor uh, cost because it's not just the defense sector whose benefits, it's also the disaster capitalist overseas business development reconstruction and it also takes countries that may not currently be fully engaged in the equity of these companies and by this having all this currency floating around uh, will, like in the case of Libya, will just immediately suck everything in Libya into the system so it can be leveraged and uh, equitized and uh, uh, securitized and packaged. So the, a lot of things get a shot in the arm when we have disaster capitalism go into an Iraq or a Libya here. And then you have these conglomerates that own the media companies making it very difficult for anyone to get a voice because you have to deal with the very largest fish in the ocean. And then of course in turn these companies are all owned by these private equity firms that are play, dancing the marionettes down here which makes a mockery of the idea of a public corporation since private companies that are protected doubly now that with Citizens United you can't know much at all about what people are doing with their money there's no public uh, declaration required for investing in these political action committees um, and an unlimited amount may be spent um, but these in addition private equity have much minimal, more minimal requirements than uh, public corporations to disclose um, although I was able to obtain a surprising amount of information. So fundamentally, the relationships between these companies are so convoluted because every company has stock in every other company, and there are multiple different levels of relationship. Um, so you could have a company three ranks down, owning stock in the top level uh, groups. So uh, you have to fundamentally look at who are the top owners of equities in the U.S. generally as individuals because all of these positions ultimately translate to individual wealth by and large. Um, so at any rate, um, you can look at the top 10 people, the top 100, top 1,000 to get a sense of it. So what we looked at now, of course, is who are these top people? And uh, let's see if I got that for you here, top people. Uh, not that one. Not that one. Actually, I think the best way to do this is... I think I've got it right here, right? Yeah. Okay, so here are the... Um, view the complete list of the richest people in America. And anybody who doubts the seriousness of our being overtaken by the emerging seven countries should just take a look at this Forbes list over time to the world's billionaires. See how quickly it's changing. So these are our people in the U.S. Uh, that are the top uh, top equity holders. Okay, so I have got this crunched into here somewhere. Let's see. I've got that crunched into here. Yeah, yeah, here we go. So, um, let's see. Yeah, okay, so these are the richest people in the U.S. And theirs are worth over their $59 billion. So we've got, um, these guys are all neocons. Uh, the Koch brothers, who funded a lot of the... Uh, corporatist, corrupt, crony capitalist, corporatist takeover of the Tea Party movement. 
the Waltons, who are also extremely right-wing, uh, George Soros, who um, uh, has used a res responsibility to protect doctrine to run this game, uh, Sheldon Adelson's ultra-right, the Waltons' ultra-right, and then uh, John Paulson, Forrest Mars, Jack Lamars, etc. Uh, so this leads to a brief explanation. Uh, which is, <clears throat> so we have this small group of rich and powerful people that form into these different groups. And that's as far as I've gotten. So thank you and uh, good luck and good night.